Welcome back everyone. I'm excited that everyone is here for this part. So in this part, we'll be discussing how we deal with our materials and textures and see all the problems that you can face when importing models, especially from DAS Studio, since it's not 100% optimized either for Cinema 4D or Octane. So we'll see all the problems, how we can tackle them and improve the quality and rendering of our model. So if I look into the material part, especially this part, the first thing that Octane doesn't like is working with native Cinema 4D materials. So I'll simply select all these models. And after selecting all of them, I'll shift C and type convert materials and make sure it's the Octane part. So I'll double click it. And as you can see here, all the default materials that the DAS model got imported with got converted into Octane material. It just takes a little bit of a while until the thumbnails load up correctly. Then I'll go to materials and then, oh, sorry, it's under um, edit and I'll tick delete unused materials. This way I deleted the, the converted Sorry, the Cinema 4D materials, and I'm just left with the Octane materials. Okay, second problem is, as you can see, that we have a ton of materials, like a lot of materials that we can proper, properly set up. So to fix that, it's a little bit of a tedious process, but it's going to save us time later, is that I'm going to click Material, then Sort Materials. What this and what Cinema 4D does is that it arranges all the similar material next to each other. As you can see here, we have this material and this material and this material. They're fairly similar because what they have in common is they share the same diffuse map. So if I clicked inside it here, you can see that it's sharing the same diffuse map, which is called um, as you can see here, color 2K 1001 or 1001. You know, if you click this one, you can see that it's sharing the same material. So what Cinema 4D does is that it arranged or it reorganized all the materials next to each other. So what I can do is select the first material and click Alt and apply, drag and drop, this material over this material. And since they are the same material, it's going to replace itself, nothing more. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and reapply all the common materials over each other. So remember this look and see how many materials I have right now and how tedious it's going to be to work with. Okay, so we're back right now. And as you can see here from this point of view, I have way less materials to work with. And our model, I think, didn't get affected because we only replaced the uh, materials on top of each other. So instead of each separate component to have a similar material, both of these components right now share the same material. So the next step would be is firing up Octane. And as you can see here, we have an issue of having a character inside. So um, we'll quickly fix it by just increasing the, the opacity of this material. Yeah, that, now, now it makes sense. Okay. So the first thing is, I love to do is clicking on this setting. It's not like lighting or rendering setups right now. It's just like quick setups. I change it into path tracing, 1024, 8 diffuse samples, 8 specular samples, and the GI clamp is set to 1. So it's just like a quick setup for testing quick lights on my materials. Then I shift C and I type HDRI environment, and I have a black environment right now. 
Then I select my robot and set, select type target light, octane targeted area light. And now I'm having a quick light that allows me to test my materials nice and easy. I'll simply turn up the opacity, down, duplicate this light, zoom in closer, maybe tone the intensity down a little bit, as you can see. So these are like fairly simple lights that allow me to test my materials and test how it will look like under reflections as I'm working with. So let's say I want to work on, on this part. I'll simply right click it and click on the node editor. So as you can see here, I can see my node editor. And the first and the, and the third problem we're facing right now is the materials only load up with just a diffuse. <clears throat> so we're missing normals, we're missing reflections, we're missing metallic maps, which adds all like these special details. So what I, I like to do is control, click and drag this diffuse node, then click the browser, select this part of the material, hit copy, and then in this search bar, I click paste, and then remove this part so it shows me all the missing materials that I need to relink manually so let's say I'm gonna import the normal part and click the normal or connect the normal with the normal and as you can see the before and after a lot of details has been added so let's say if we store the render buffer disconnect this part so as you can see especially in this area we have a lot of detail added here specifically okay so we remove the render buffer connect back to normal <clears throat> then take the number of the material back again copy and paste I'll click on the metallic then I'll change the type of this material from glossy to universal, link the metallic to the metallic part, then control click and drag. It's the same part. Connect the roughness and connect the roughness to this part. Okay, at this point, it's all about art direction. Sometimes what I love to do is selecting the metallic part, the metallic material, and I invert it. So the moment I inverted it, I managed to turn my model to look a little bit more metallic. So it's all based on, on art direction. Let's say you want a more matte look, so you leave it at the default setting, but let's say you want a more reflection look or a more um, look that gives a, an interesting look with lighting. So I'll just invert the metallic texture and I'll mess with the gamma a little bit. So let's say the default 2.2 gamma is a little bit too reflective. Sometimes I love to tone it down a little bit as you can see to something like 0.7 or 1 so it's not super diffused and not super reflective and sometimes I, I like to test out inverting also the reflection or the roughness material to have a specific look so it's a matter of repeating the same process over and over again Okay, so we're back, and as you can see here, this is our main file. We'll try to simply turn off everything. So we're turn off our environment, or turn off our mic ground. 
And as you can see, our robot is like decently textured. I think maybe we missed this part. So let's do it again back quickly. So yeah, as you can see here, I fixed <clears throat> the missing material part. And as you can see, most of my materials have the same setup here, here, and if you clicked here or here, they all have the same setup. <clears throat> as you can see, but let's take a closer look on how we textured the ground. It's going to be the same process. I'm going to look for the material that I created from the first part. It's basically a glossy material that has this nice, interesting looking sci-fi tile, which has all the proper materials such as the normals, as you can see, the roughness and the specular part. So it's as simple as I drag it and drop it here and I drag it and drop it here. But as you can see, the tiling looks horrible. But let's explore it first. So at first I have the diffuse, connecting the diffuse to the diffuse channel. Then I have the normal. <clears throat> then I have the roughness and the specular. And I also inverted the specular so it gives this more interesting shiny look instead of having this like matte diffused look. So to fix the tiling issue, I simply select my plane, select the material, and in the tiling section, I simply type numbers similar to, let's say, 10 by 10. I think 10 by 10 looks reasonable. Maybe let's look down. Maybe it's looking a little bit too big. 15 by 15. So now my material is repeating 15 times on the X axis and 15 times on the Y axis. And I'll do the same for the backward plane. 15 by 15. <clears throat> So yeah, let's unhide back our environment. And as you can see, our environment, I think it's, it's set up in a similar way. We have an albedo, we have a normal map, we have a roughness map, as you can see here, and we have metallic map, and the reason why I didn't want it inverted to be a little bit glossy because I think it's too much reflections can distract the eye. And I only want the eye to focus just on this part. I didn't want, let's say, this to be super reflective and this to be super reflective and this part to be super reflective. So it can get a little bit confusing. So yeah. I left most of the environments diffused and just maybe focusing on this part. So I think the materials and textures part is over. Next class, I think we're going to be moving with lighting and giving a nice, interesting mood. So thanks for watching. If you didn't subscribe, consider subscribing. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.